MartiniInTheMorning.com welcomes Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. Happy birthday in advance. Hey, thank you. you. Lean, yeah, lean in there a thank little bit. Thank you so much. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you back. Hey, it's a pleasure to be well, here. When was that? That was uh, like, like a year and a half? Like two and a half years ago. Oh, it yeah. was not long after you won America's Got Talent. Right. Dude, that yeah. lot's happened since then. Yes. Been touring from the east to west coast. I got to go to, over to Germany and perform for our troops and their families. Very you cool. Know, just support them. Yeah. As much as they support us. So. Very I cool. I mean, I've just been traveling and doing my thing, you know, enjoying this good music. How's life? Great. Yeah? Having a good yes. time? Yes. The, the album, uh, of course, the album that came out after the uh, after winning America's Got Talent, that's life. I mean, what a, what what an amazing thing that happened. What a curveball in your life. Yes, big time. I can't go to Walmart anymore. Really? <laughs> you, people stopping you at Walmart all the time now? Yeah. I got to sign a thousand autographs just to get a dozen eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it's worth it. Oh, it's well worth it. You know, I appreciate all the fans and all the love and support that I get, you know, so... I'm just trying to keep it going, you know, trying to uh, bring the good music back to the world, which we need anyway. Yeah, it's, and and you and you guys have done such a great job. The the album is terrific. I just remember so well when uh, when you when you were on America's Got Talent. I remember our listeners start. I started getting emails and texts, and people were sending. The, I guess there was a like a YouTube clip or something that right like after your first performance, and I, I got like a hundred emails. People sending me links to this YouTube clip, and they said you got to see this guy, you know, <laughs> and. And uh, uh, and it, it was I mean you how long how long did you know before that that you had this voice? Uh, ever since I guess I was about fourteen, I started clowning around in the uh, inner cities of Detroit on the basketball course to stop uh, you know all the kids from arguing over foul calls and things like that, or just shooting up the basketball court. So. When you I start would singing? Is, yeah, I would sing like I've got dunked on you. I would say, "Fly me to the moon." <laughs> <laughs> Land out Eugene just, Murphy Jr. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah, but it, it kept everybody from arguing because they they couldn't do nothing but laugh, you know. And then you know, as I grew older, I started getting in the clubs. Once I turned twenty one, mm -hmm. you know, and I started singing in open mic nights and things like that, just entertaining my friends and family. And it's just something that that stuck with me. Wow, that's amazing. How did you know those songs? To, to even sing? uh, te television. I mean, if you watch Bugs Bunny, they make fun of the Rat Pack like. All the time, merry melodies. It's always big band yeah, sounds and yeah. things like that, and it's just part of your, our lives that we really don't see until we sit down and pay attention to it, you know. Yeah. And, and little Debbie's commercials and things like that. It's always Frank Sinatra somewhere. It's always Rat Pack somewhere. And now it's Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. Martini in the Morning dot com nine thirty in the West. Dave Damiani and Landau Eugene Murphy in the studio with us. We'll talk uh, about the show Sunday night and a whole lot more on Martini in the Morning dot com. Martini in the morning dot com. Fly me to the moon. The song he used when he dunked the basketball. That's right. In his in his misspent youth. <laughs> Land out Eugene Murphy Jr. on Martini in the morning dot com. What's the biggest change in your life over the last couple of years since uh, what's it was uh, America's Got Talent was twenty uh, eleven. Yes. So what's the big what's the biggest change in your life? Uh, I own my own house now. There you go. You know, and that was like a blessing, you know, that I, that all everybody wants to own their own house, you know. And I bought a house for me and my kids. You know, it's a five bedroom cedarwood. It's kind of like city and country at the same time. Kind of mm -hmm. fits my personality. It's nothing over the top, you know. And, and I just, you know, I travel and do this music. So that's that's a big change in my life. <laughs> you um, how many kids you have? Five. Five kids. I got five kids. Yes. Yeah. I got four of my own, and I have a stepdaughter. Very cool. Yeah. How old are your kids? It's 19 to 12. Really? Mine are uh, from 21 to 32. I'm old. <laughs> you, you, I'll say it just so you don't have to. I'm old. Yeah. Um, so, uh, although I have to tell you, I, and I, 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 I love, we, we have seven grandkids. We love our grandkids. We're just not so certain we like their parents. You know, that's kind of the way you'll 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 find that as kids get a little older. You okay. know, I can't believe you have a 19 year old. You're you're yes, I have a 19 year old. Uh, he's a uh, an extremely great cellist. Really? Yeah, and he's like six foot five. Really? 19 years old won't pick up a basketball to save his life. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> Dave Damiani in the studio with us too. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys did a rehearsal last night for the show Sunday. I mean, I mean, it's so cool because I've been I've been hearing about Landau and I've and I've seen the videos and stuff and heard the music, but last night or yesterday, just to be in the rehearsal studio and Sam and just is so much fun and I think I, I think I mean if you haven't seen this guy 
you got to come out Sunday night. But his personality, it's infectious. Everybody in the band like was like, oh, man, he's the coolest guy. It was just, it's, it's awesome. You know, when, when Landau came in the first time a couple of years ago, um, you were here with Steve Tyrell was here and yeah. uh, John Allen came in with yeah. him and they worked on your on your record and, and it was funny because I talked to them before before we met and they said the same thing they they said you had this like this energy this like in, like <laughs> uh, that it was like a almost like a kid in the candy store that you were just so that you had so much fun being around the music with, yeah with, uh, definitely I mean you want to learn as much as you can and at the same time you want to have fun I try to keep my eyes wide open because I don't want to miss anything you know a lot of uh, artists. Once they get to, you know, 50 and 60, they don't remember their 20s. You know, and I want to remember, like, all of it. Like, from now until I'm 90 or 100 years old, I want to I want to remember every moment. Every moment with you, every moment with Dave, every mm-hmm. moment with anybody, Miss Patti LaBelle or anything. You play with Patti LaBelle? Yeah, I did a, a, a show with Patti LaBelle on America's Got Talent. You really? Know, oh, we, I didn't know that. Yeah, we performed on there for my uh, finale act. Really, I didn't get to see that. Yes. I saw you on. I saw you on there a couple of times as you were working your way up. Um, what, what was that like? Oh, that was amazing. That's like you know, that's like my spiritual mom. Really, I really? mean, she kind of like gave me a whole lot of good pointers on how to uh, be in the business and how to remain grounded, you know, and just focus on what makes my heart feel good. You know, she's amazing. You know, one of my very th- amazing. Well, on the Frank Sinatra duet, which which is a the the duets one and two were. And some Frank Sinatra purists don't like him uh, because he was it wasn't the best time in his career voice wise. But it was it was something really unique because it showed his power because everybody, you know, all these artists wanted to sing with Frank Sinatra. And one of my favorite songs on the duets is the one he did with Patti LaBelle. Yeah. They did uh, 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 um, it wasn't Bewitched, Bother Yeah, it was Bewitched, yeah. Bother Bewildered. And right. and her when she hits that high note, it's like ah. You know, yeah. you get chills. And the other song she did that was great with another uh, paper of mine from my pop days, uh, she did a duet with Michael McDonald years ago called yeah. On My Own. On My Own. Yeah. Absolutely tears my heart out. And that song is actually the song that started me in the singing like karaoke in bars. Really? I used to sing that song with a lady named Pat Simpson. Really? It's like Donnie Simpson's from BET, his, um, oh, really? his brother's wife. Wow. Yeah, and I used to sing. Really? I used to sing that song with her, and she sounded just like Patti LaBelle. No kidding. So, like, my whole time growing up as a young man, I always said I was going to sing with Patti LaBelle. So, once the AGT came about, they asked me who I wanted to do my duet with. And my yeah. first name on the list was Patti LaBelle. Love Gladys it. Knight was second. You know, and then uh, Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, and so on and so forth. Hey, um, I'll tell you, you can't, like... You you have a perception when you when you hear someone's record and right. you, you see what they do. You can't really pigeonhole this guy. Yesterday, it, it doesn't. The record doesn't really I mean, as, as great as the record is. It doesn't reflect him live at all. Really, it's real. I mean, he's yeah. he's really got a great thing. And and like he told me, he was in a blues band. He did country. He's done everything. And, and he's he, he's very he's very musical. I I had no idea how great it was and how much fun it was going to be. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, lo- I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Sunday night at Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood. And uh, not only is it um, going to be a great show, it's also Landau's birthday. So we all get to stand up and say happy birthday to him. <laughs> Except Mother Miriam can't sing anymore. She's already exceeded her uh, quota. The, the temporary. <laughs> a raspberry. <laughs> the injunction has been filed. The judge has signed the order. Um, Pat, yeah, the Patty Patty LaBelle thing. That can you do you do you, when you sing like on my own? Do you sound like Michael McDonald? Yeah, you try to. I mean, especially if you're doing karaoke. Yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. Everybody wants to hear it just like the album. So I would try to sing like Michael McDonald. Just put that little bass in my voice. Yeah. You know, and then the lady, she actually sounded just like Patti LaBelle. So that's what, like, really turned me on to Patti LaBelle. And then I started watching Motown 25. I think that was in, what, 84 or 83. And Michael Jackson did the moonwalk. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Joe Cocker was on there. Billy Preston. Love. I mean, that was, like, my favorite VHS. Right. Tape so, that I had. So you were, so you were really, you were really setting yourself up to be a singer for a long time. Exactly, but not knowing it, you know. I, I, right, think, right. I think God just put me on that path, and I just stayed on it. And it was just like it kept me out of trouble. And you know, when all my friends around me were dying and going to prison, I was in church or on a basketball court or singing. You know, that's that's something that kept me going, and it, and it kept me all the way up until this point. And on the uh, on your album, you got a chance to sing with a very, very talented lady. A duet that Frank Sinatra did with his uh, with his daughter. Steve Tyrell did it with his daughter, yes. who's getting married tomorrow. Yes, she is. Here's Landau on Martini in the Morning. 
with Judith Hill. It's Landau Eugene Murphy. Jr. That's funny. You know, I just thought I, I I hadn't even made the connection, but you you did America's Got Talent, a great uh, opportunity to expose new talent, and then she just did the voice last year. Yes, and I can't believe she got kicked off. I know. Wasn't that I crazy? I thought she was going to win it. I did too. I, I really thought she did. was going to go all the way. I was tweeting like crazy. <laughs> we uh, we got to see her. Uh, I've seen her with Steve Tyrell, but we also got to see her at. Um, uh, she did a show with Steve, uh, with Marilyn and Alan Bergman. It was called Visions of America. It's this amazing book of uh, photography by this guy uh, Joseph, Joseph Sohm, who's been for what three thirty years. He's been taking pictures for, for magazines and stuff, and he was. He was basically journal, uh, journaling America in photographs. So he got a deal. He they did a book, and then uh, 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 this great arranger Roger Calloway, who was like Bobby Darren's musical director at one time. I mean, he's done so much stuff. But anyway, Roger Calloway decided to set it to music, and they created this like this photo. I don't know. It was almost like a Broadway show, except it was all photographs and an orchestra, and there were some vocals. Marilyn and Alan Bergman, of course, you know, wrote like the way we were and right. what are you doing the rest of your life and all those songs. Anyway, they they wrote some new vocals to go with the show, and Steve and uh, Judith did the vocals. It was amazing. But uh, have you performed live with her? Uh, I performed with her for the Christmas, the Hollywood Christmas Parade. Really? That's when I performed with her. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and we got to walk the red carpet and all that stuff and and get out of the really? car. I had to help her out of the car. That was like the most nervous part. Was she wearing like big shoes? Yeah, she yeah, was she wearing really like these the... big shoes. We was in like a convertible something. I don't know what it was. And I had to grab her hand after I opened the door. And the whole time I had to be like looking at the camera. Right, right, right. And, doing, the po- doing the Hollywood pose. Right, yeah. right. So I grab her and I'm just hoping she doesn't fall and, you know, all that stuff. And it worked out good. And then we went in there and we nailed the song and the whole, you know, everybody just loved it. What song did you do? Oh, did you do Something Stupid? We did, uh, yeah, Something Stupid. Very cool. No, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Oh, oh. It was, it was Christmas time. That's right, that's yeah. right. So we did the Christmas song. Speaking of Christmas, you were, uh, I understand you're working on a Christmas album. Yes, we are. Right now it's about, uh, I can say, I can say about 92% finished. We're going back in to redo some vocals, and we should have that out around, what, November? Yeah. November, yeah. Good time. Good timing for Christmas. Just some time. I hope we get, uh, get some, uh, get it so we can play it. Oh, yeah, we have a big. Uh, we do every year. We do a a uh, holiday music poll, and um, so what we try to do is like when their new Christmas albums coming out, and people get kind of get a little peeled. But but we want it like if there's a new album. Like we did this a couple of years ago. Dina Martin, Dean Martin's daughter. You know, she did a Christmas album that was terrific, and she had a duet with uh, it was Andy Williams' last recording. It was they did um, uh, White Christmas together, and. Um, uh, so we in, we started playing Christmas music a little bit early because we wanted people to be able to vote on it, you know. So we want to get you into the countdown. Oh yeah, Landau oh, Eugene Murphy that. Jr. on Martini in the Morning dot com with uh, and then Sunday night with Dave Damiani's No Vacancy Orchestra, which I always try to call the No Reservations. I was introducing them on stage the other night and and I hesitated. I was and, and Dave's like looking at me. He's don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> I don't know why I get no reservation. No, va- I can, I think no this- reservation makes it sound like a Chili's or a Fridays or something. <laughs> like that. You want to be uh, you want to be no vacancy yeah, or at least uh, exclusive. At least at least reservation. Exclusive. So oh, what yeah. are you guys going to do? I mean, what's what, what what's the what's the show going to be like? Um, we're gonna I'm gonna do a few tunes from the big band. He's gonna do a bunch of songs. Uh, we're, we're we're gearing it around you know the American Songbook stuff. Yeah, because he does all this other stuff. He's got these great arrangements of, you know, My Girl, and he's really? with the temp- He's doing one yeah. of the Temptations, is singing on a Chris- Christmas record. Really? Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Uh, yes. Any other surprises like that on the Christmas album? Since we, any other uh, guests? Basically, on it? everybody can look out. I got a book that's coming out. You got a book? Yeah, that tells us, you know, my story of of how I made it to America's Got Talent and and up till now. So that'll be out around November too, I believe. I was just thinking as you were. As you were talking about uh, uh, buying a house and, and, and contrasting that to when we talked the last time you were here, uh, you told us a story about your house in West Virginia Yeah. before America's got... That got robbed. Happened. Well, so t- tell us, what happened? Well, um, me and my wife, we was doing everything we could you know, to survive. We were just working at fast food restaurants. I was washing cars and things like that and singing in clubs, earning extra money and... And my father-in-law died. Her 
her dad actually passed away so we went to help out her mom which was 70 she i think she was like 72 at the time or something like that she didn't want to stay in this big house way up in the in the holler by herself up so, in the holler yeah they really call it, it a holler because you got a holler for people like hey can i get some sugar <laughs> Hey, I need to go to the store. <laughs> you know, that's what we call it. The holler. Up in the holler. So she was way up in the holler. Way up in the holler. Like the holler. Three miles up in the holler, you mm-hmm. know, from where we stayed at. And um, she wanted us to spend time with her, you know. And so, you know, a night turned into a week, a week turned into a month. And then we decided to, like, go home and check on our house. Right. And when I got to my driveway, you know, there's water running out of my front door. Somebody kicked the door in, took all the copper, all my appliances, refrigerator, no. stove, clothes, everything. So and that's what, you know, made me go on America's Got Talent because I was 35 at the time and I had absolutely nothing. I couldn't take care of my wife at the time. I didn't have anything. I was just like, wow, what am I going to do? Right. So it's either like go out and do something stupid or find a positive path. And America's Got Talent was that path, you know. Right. Howie Mandel came across the TV screen. Are you the winner of America's Got Talent? Do you have what it takes to headline your own show in Vegas? You know, he's going through his whole thing. And I was like, that's it. You know, and I went on that show, you know, not expecting to win. I was just trying to better my life, you know, in any kind of way I could. After the first audition and sticking the gum in my pocket, and these are actually the jeans that I had on. Really? Yeah. Wow. I stuck the gum right here, and it stuck to a $10 bill inside my pocket. And, you know, and it was just like... After that, I just I didn't think about going on through the show. I right. was just happy for that one moment. All right. I needed was that one moment. I, I figured somebody would call me and I'll go to a cruise ship or, or something and, and have a career like that. But, you know, God blessed me tremendously, you know, without me even trying to, like, really go out for it. That's, you know, that's the story that kind of makes people cry. That's yeah. a great story, man. And you, so that's what the book's about? Yeah, that's what about the book basically happened. tells. It just tells my struggles, how I got there, you yeah. know? And, and that was one. I mean, you... You got to think, it was so bad. But in all that badness, I turned it into a positive. And that's what I try to convey to, like, the kids that's coming up now. I mean, just because something bad happens in your life doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I mean, God puts you through certain things that he wants you to go through. It's going to test you tremendously. I, my but test is Mother Miriam. And I'm not sure I can. I'm not, I'm not sure I can handle it. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm being it. mightily tested. That's one thing he doesn't do. He doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. Really? Yes. Hey, you, Brad. This is the coolest thing. He was telling me they were staying at the Sophie Tell when he was in town. Yeah. And he had me and friends with everybody. The valets, the guys yeah, working in the kitchen, the guys working. Like he's just like the coolest guy ever. Yeah. And, and you know what? There's nobody like that in the genre. There's nobody like that. You know, the funny thing is, and I, Dave and I have, have spent a lot of time together the last few. We just met a few uh, what when was your album when i think did, it was april 3rd we, okay so so dave came in and and i told him we were getting ready to do mother miriam's big old birthday party at uh, catalina's uh that was back on june 24th and uh uh she turned 75 and we had a bunch of people come out including dave and we had uh, we had uh, actually ron jones band uh, seth mcfarland's band ron okay, jones uh, influence yeah. jazz orchestra came That's and played guy, yeah, right. family guy, yeah. yeah yeah and uh so they came and played and then we had a bunch of artists that, that we that we know and like that are based here in southern california most of them uh tony de flew from new york but we had Rick Braun, who's a fabulous trumpet player, he's done an album of vocals. Anyway, we had all of our friends. Steve Tyrell closed the show. Um, that show was kind of a model in my mind for something that I've, I wanted to do since we started this. It's not easy for artists in this genre to get noticed, and uh, unless you're on a national television show That's like right. America, yeah, I mean, really, yeah. I mean, talk about being blessed. You yes. know, you have millions and millions of people saw you, but most artists don't get that opportunity. So what we want to do is we want to be a radio station that can expose the music and to create opportunities out across the country for artists to play and that's why we created martinis and, and across another, america another cool thing about it is that all these vegas hotels and stuff in like atlantic city they do these cheesy rat pack things i mean i'm not trying to talk down about no, it no no but, i understand but it's just like it's like so lame it's like everybody's right. trying to emulate right and like i feel like for the first time when i when i met him yesterday and like we, we were we were doing the rehearsal i'm like like we could actually create something like that for real. For real. For real, where right. it, where we don't have to pretend to be. Right. 
this someone is, from 50 years ago. This is the real ago. thing. This yeah. is the real thing. Real yeah. deal. Not imitating somebody else. This right. is the real thing. This is real music. And yeah, I'm being, I'm being Landau. He's being Dave. You and, know, and, and, and we're, you, we're giving him good music. And yeah. that's why we created and, America. And you, and you can present current events today. And you can talk about things today. You don't have to pretend like right. it's 1960. Exactly. Right. That, and the, because this music is as cool today as it was back then. I mean, there's no reason for it to be a flashback. It's, it's here. It's now. It's very contemporary. And again, that's why we created uh, Martinis Across America. But I have to tell you, Dave... Because Dave's got this. This is the reason I think I call him the No Reservations Orchestra. Because he's got no reservations about nothing. He will do anything. So we started working on this thing. He went to his friends at Citibank, and Citibank says we're in. So we yeah. we needed we need spot. We got more sponsors. When Stoli's coming on Sunday to 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 like you know start the relationship. They're going to sponsor a portion of the evening on Sunday night. We're going to have Stoli it. cocktails. I guess we'll be drinking Stoli Martinis we'll Sunday Stoli, night. Stoli Martinis. Woo! <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's uh, Landau, Eugene Murphy Jr., and uh, Dave Damiani, his uh, um, No Vacancy. Vacancy Orchestra <laughs> Sunday night at Catalina Jazz Club, presented by Martinis Across America and City. Um, what else do you want to do? I mean, you've, you, I mean, you've, so much has happened to you in the last, you know, three or four years. W- 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 you know, what's down the road? What's ahead? Uh, I just want to, I want to continue to uh, create good music. I mean, I wanna I wanna go off and uh, collaborate with a lot of these artists out here that's kind of lost, yeah. And you know, and 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 bring good music to the world. I mean, I do a version of Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice. Really? And a crooner. Really? <laughs> yes. Like are, you gonna, are you gonna do it in the show? Rolling down the street, <laughs> smoking and dough, sipping on gin and juice. Woo-hoo. Laid back. <laughs> I got my mind on my money, money on my mind. With so much drama in Logan County, it's kind of hard being me. <laughs> I know? love it. I mean, and I do the whole song really in my show, and the people love it because they can relate to the song Gin and Juice. Right, you know? right, and right. It's without all the curse words and you all know that, that stuff. It's funny because Dave does the same thing. We, we, I was talking about it earlier. Uh, he does like uh, Prince's Raspberry Beret, but right. as, a, as a as a you know jazz kind of swing thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. But and, that's the you know the talent that me and him have that we're trying to give to the world, and and, and the world needs it. It's not like we're just without a making doubt. this stuff I mean, up. Like, they like, need I, it. Honestly, he could open up for Jay Z. He could open up for Justin Timberlake. He could open up for any of these pop acts that are out there doing this because. We talked about this. It's about access. Right. The, yes. the younger kids, they don't have the access. They're, and when they do hear the music, they love it. You right. know, you know that's, that's, that's an interesting point. And, and it's been part of our premise here. And, and we're, we're working on a project that will lead us into schools a little bit. Um, uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. told me a long time ago when we, first, when we were first researching to do this, to, to try to create what you're talking about. Uh, this, is not, this is not your parents' or your grandparents' music. This is our music. And and one of the things Frank Jr. said is that he saw when music started when music started disappearing from schools, when the you know they started cutting music programs, the lack of music education in schools means that kids are, are only exposed to what them and their contemporaries listen to, that them and their buddies, they what, whatever they hear on the radio, that's the only music that they're exposed to. Right. And this is and this is an opportunity to expose them to a different style. Yes. And a different way of doing music, and uh, and we're really, I think that's an important part of what we're doing, and that's why we want to get you guys out on the road. That's right. I mean, me being on America's Got Talent and doing the Frank Sinatra stuff, I didn't just pick this genre just because I felt like you know I would have been different and had a wow factor. I did it because I wanted to give back to all the grandparents of the world, you know, and also teach the generations to come what good music was really all about. It's not right. about degrading women. It's not about the flashy cars or the diamonds and things that you have. It's all about blue skies, puffy cloud, great America, you know, and, and, and you want to convey that to, to the youth that's coming up, you know, and for me to be the pie piper of the doing that, I'm playing that instrument, <laughs> you know, and Dave's right here with me and he's doing the same thing. And, you know, we're teaching kids you know what good music was really all about and we're also giving those memories back to all the grandparents of the world Landa Eugene Murphy Jr. Sunday night Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood with Dave Damiani's No Vacancy Orchestra 10 o'clock in the West playing the greatest songs ever written online around the clock and around the world this is martiniinthemorning.com it's um, Landa Eugene Murphy Jr. and um Dave Damiani, uh, they will be on stage uh, together and separately and um, together forever the, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. with uh, uh, the, the big show Sunday night at Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood. Have you, you've been to Catalina 
Didn't yes, you? Yes. Didn't you go up and do a song with Steve with once? Steve Tyrell. Yeah, yeah. you. Were, that was when you were in town. We did the interview. Before. Right. Yeah. I got a. Uh, like three or four standing ovations that night. Really? From those that whole crowd. And I mean, and they love me. And, and you know, I guess they reach out and grab me again. Why wouldn't they love you, man? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, this when, is... that's when Lyman told me about him. Lyman, Lyman who plays bass. Right. He plays I was like, for man, us. you got to check out this guy, man. He's yeah. bad. Well, is he playing Sunday night? You know what? He should be, but he's got, he's at Steve Daughter's wedding. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. So yeah. he's going to come by. If he makes it towards the second half of the show, I'm going to call him up on stage. Yeah, Lyman's yeah. a fabulous yeah. bass player. Yes, he is. Um, so you, when you when you're out around the country, are you playing? Are you taking? A, or when you play a show, do you take a, a, a big band? Do you take a small band? Do you, what do you? No, you? I take a small band, like six piece band, and then I'll come to whatever town we're in, and I'll hire you know uh, some local another musicians. six yeah. yeah local musicians. You know, at union do fees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to do that <laughs> at the union fee, the union and, fee. and they they have a good time. I mean, I, I try to uh, keep uh, the energy up in the room, and uh, I try to keep all of those guys happy the whole time we're out, and you know, so they don't miss their families or yeah, or miss being at home. How much are you out? Just about what? What three times uh, every two months or so? I mean, we're out a lot. Yeah. We've been out a pretty much a lot. I've been on tour for two years. Really? Ever since the Yeah, show. ever since America's Got Talent, I've been like nonstop. I mean, I probably had like a, a month off. Really? Yeah. What's your, uh, any, any like really, any uh, experiences on the road doing concerts? Anything that really stands out is uh, like it knocked you off your feet? Uh, just about uh, everything. I, I think the Apollo was like really. Oh, you played the Apollo Theater. Yeah, wow. I played the Apollo Theater, yeah. and it was like a whole mixed crowd, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, and I, I felt like I was an amateur. Really. You know, yeah. I walked out. I rubbed the log and everything. I did yeah. the whole spiritual. The tradition, thing. yeah. Yeah, I was just like, I'm not taking anything in chance, you know. So I rubbed the log, and it was like, you ain't supposed to rub the log. You are, you're a professional now. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> this is the Apollo Theater, you know. And I rubbed wow. the log, and I went up there, and I did my songs, and they loved it. Everybody like really embraced me. They had that my name on the marquee on 125th Street. Did you I take mean, a picture? Yes, right in front Good. of it. Good for and, you. Uh, Good for you. I mean, I just been doing a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm on my way to China in really? October. Yeah. Wow, what's going on over there? Uh, they got the Mercedes Benz Arena over there, which holds China's Got Talent. And the guy who actually does that is from our hometown of West Virginia. Really? Yes. So you know, he invited us over. He's reached out to my manager, and they've been going back and forth now. So we're trying to lock that date down. Is that your first out of the country performance? No, I, I did Germany. Oh, that's right. You right. said that with the, for the yeah. for the for the troops. Um, and then he played. But did you oh, did you do something with Rod Stewart? You're saying like at the uh, uh, Rod Stewart was at the Green Bar. I actually seen his you know live concert. You know, I was in like the first row and I really? got to say hi to him and all that stuff. And then he kicked some soccer balls and left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was just he did his whole show. I mean, the guy was great. He did a wonderful performance and then he kicked like soccer balls yeah. into the audience. You know how he is. He's got a whole. Uh, I, I know there's a name for it. It's not called a field it's a pitch or something but in his backyard he's got a soccer field yeah you know, he's mean, really into and he it. had pictures of his family and his kids right. while he was singing and i mean yeah. it was a great performance it was really good and yeah. you know he hollered but only problem that he that i seen on the stage with him is he after he was like thanking the crowd instead of saying west virginia he's like thank you virginia oh oh yes he little did. geography lesson right he said that like right at the end of his show and i was like west virginia man you know and <laughs> wait wait isn't, like, isn't there another name isn't it west by god west virginia? by god virginia is god country that's what it's called i say god. that when we we, <laughs> we, we, we 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 have a we have a sponsor from uh that's what it's up called. In the holler. do you up know do, holler, you, man. do you know where arthur west virginia is is that uh, town ring a bell? No. We have a sponsor. who It's a blanket company. They do these like customized blankets. And the, we came, became aware because they made one for, for the station with our logo on it. And uh, But they're in Arthur, West Virginia. And so sometimes when I do their, their little spot, I'll say, I'll say uh, the, guy, the guy that owns it, his name is Clint Hillman. Uh, I'll say, you know, Clint Hillman from Arthur, West by God, Virginia. And Mother Miriam looks at me like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> that's West by but that's God. But that's kind of the thing, yeah, right? They call, they call it God country. You know, just imagine my life, though. I, I was born and raised till I was 11 in God country, West by God, West Virginia. And then I was moved to Detroit, which at the time in the 90s was like moving to Baghdad. <laughs> 
<laughs> and now it's broke Baghdad. Right. Bankrupt they just Baghdad. Filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. But I the funny thing about it is that I had a perception of what what that was about to happen and I was telling people like when I moved back to West Virginia, it was in ninety nine in the beginning of two thousand. And I was telling all of them, I was like, this city is like really about to go down and yeah. they didn't understand what I was saying. And this was, you know, fifteen years ago. And yeah. I was telling them all of this that it was gonna happen and they just it's did not catch on to what I said. But and now you they survived. For bank. Yeah. But you survived. I got out of that. I crawled up out of that bucket, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> you feel lucky? I feel blessed. It's not luck. It's it's a divine, you know, movement of around me. And I think God has a, a hand on my life, you know, because there's a lot of times bullets flew past my head, you know, and I've heard bullets fly past my head. You know, I've been in a house that's been shot up just because somebody next door was arguing with somebody down the block, you know. And it's just, I've always been missed, and you here, know. And here you are. And here I am. I never thought I would see 21. And now you're... I'm going to be 39 Sunday. 39 years old. 39 years old. 39. I can't wait to see 40. You know, it is It is exciting. I had a friend uh, it was a, a, a few years ago when I was... Uh, well, many years ago when I turned 50. Um, well, I guess I can wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can wait. My, uh, I, with the, when we started the radio station here in L.A., uh, I had... the honor of being the program director for a, a fellow that I had admired in radio for years, uh, a guy named Gary Owens, who Gary, uh, before your time, uh, Gary was on a, a legendary radio station here in L.A. for a long time, and then he was uh, on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. It was this great comedy show. that la- It was a, a, it was a uh, milestone comedy show because it, they they tested all the limits of television. It was a right. great show and a lot and everybody wanted to be. They had presidents on the show. It was like what Saturday Night Live is now, only probably a little better. But anyway, Gary Owens was the announcer on uh, on uh, on Rona Martin's Laugh In, and um, and then, so I, I got to work with him for a couple a couple of years. And um, I was about to turn fifty, and Gary came up to me and he said, "You know, Brad." There's a lot of age discrimination. He always put his hand over his ear. There's a lot of age discrimination in Hollywood. You might not want to tell people you're, people you're going to be 50. And his wife looked at me and she said, you know, if you want to say you're celebrating a milestone birthday, tell people you're turning 40. It's a hard 40, but you can pull it off. Right. <laughs> but, uh, I'm but, turning 40 on Wednesday. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. See, welcome to the club. I know, 39, man. 40. I love it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Landau Eugene Murphy Jr., 39. Dave Damiani. 40. Knocking on 40's door. Sunday night, Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood. Martinis across America and Citibank. Uh, proud to uh, present this awesome. This is. I'm going to get a, a real banner made because it's. You know, there's an expression. You know, we're doing it under the Martinis across America banner. Yeah. I'm going to get a real Martini uh, across. I, you have it by Sunday. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we'll we'll get the banner done, and uh, and we'll we'll all be there. And I hope uh, I hope that uh, we get a lot of our our friends out because I think this is a real opportunity to see uh, a little history in the making. I yes. mean, really, because what you did, what you've done, is historic. You realize that you're gonna have a place in the history books. Uh, you, right now, I got my own street. I got really? my own holiday. Really? Where? Yeah, in West Virginia. I really? got Landau Lane, and then. Every September the 14th, it's Landau Day. Really? Wow. Yes. That's a, why September 14th? Because that's the time that I won. That's when oh, I is that won. the day you, you won? Do you do a concert absolutely. on September 14th every year? Uh, no, I just go and hang out with everybody in my town. We should go do a Martini's Across America show in, wh- what's your hometown? Landau Day. West Virginia. And where in, where, what city? Logan, West Virginia. We should go do, we should Logan, go do a show there. And we got a great theater there. That know? would be great. We should do it. Hey, I'm with it. Here's the bad thing: when you say something like this to Dave Damiani, I'll be on the phone on the way it home. It happens. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love you. They would. They would. They would love really? you in my town. They would love you, man. That's Martini in the Morning dot com. Landau Eugene Murphy really Jr. Would. Dave Damiani, the No Vacancy Orchestra, Sunday Night Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood, and uh, if anybody has done it his way, it's this guy, Landau Eugene Murphy. We'll see you Sunday night. Hey, thank you. Now that's music.